Hi, this is Kevin from the Mathsaurus, and in this video we're looking at question 6 of the Oxford Maths Admissions Test from 2019. This is a question that's targeted just at the computer scientists, but I think it's also great practice for anyone uh, sitting this exam as well. These questions we tend to get a bit more sort of computational algorithmic uh, thinking questions, but they're still great mathematical puzzles that test your ap application of A-level maths to a harder question. So obviously great for computer scientists, but good for mathematicians as well. Um, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've almost finished with this paper now, there'll just be one part, uh, question seven, that I'll put out in a couple of days. Um, but uh, do keep the bell notification on get, and get notifications for I put, when I put other um, questions out. I'm hoping to do some uh, step questions later in the year that you might find interesting as well. Anyway, um, that's enough for now. Let me get on with the question and I hope it's useful to you. So this question is about these flexadecimal numbers that they define in the question. I'm not going to read through the whole thing here, pause and read the whole question if you haven't worked through it already. Um, but the idea of these is that they are giving you a place value system, so a bit like our ordinary decimal numbers, but rather than ticking over when we get to a 9, then we tick over to a 0 and put a 1 in the next column for 10s or 100s or whatever it is, we tick over at different values, okay? So um, so for we start with, so the ordinary number 0 in this system is just 0, and then 1 is just 1, uh, and now 2, so the first column we tick over like it's in binary, and we tick to 1, 0. So helpful if you've thought about things like binary before here, right? But you'll get the idea soon enough either way. So for 3, then I've got a 1 and a 1. So effectively, if we think about the what the columns represent here, the, this column here is 1s and this column is 2s, and we're asked to keep going up to 13 at least to get an idea here, right? So 4, actually they've given to us in the question here, is 2, 0, so that's 2, 2s and no 1s. Um, 5, I can do 2, 1, 6. Now, I can't do 2, 2, so I tick over to 2, but this second column is going to only be allowed to have zeros, 1s and 2s in it, so at this point I have to go 1, 0, 0, and that means that this next column is going to be 6s. Okay, and so we just keep going, 1, 0, 1, uh, 8 is 1, 1, 0, so that's a 6 plus 2 plus 0, 9 is 6 plus 2 plus 1, for 10, we're going to have 6, uh, and then we're going to have two twos and no ones. 11, then 1, 2, 1. 12, we tick over again to now have two sixes, uh, and we get 2, 0, 0. And the last one we're asked to do is 13, which is 2, 0, 1. And now it's really instructive at this point just to pause for a second and to think when do we net, what do we get in the next column? Okay, so. Um, so let's imagine we keep going. The largest number we're allowed in this column is a 3, here a 2, and here a 1. So this number would be 18 plus 4 plus 1, that would be 23. So actually, the one after that, I'm just going to go off the screen here, would be 24, okay, which would be 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so the next column here is 24. And if you think about this carefully enough, what we're seeing is that the columns are the factorials. One factorial is one, two factorial is two, three factorial is six, four factorial is 24. So the next one we would tick over at would be when we'd have the number four, three, two, one, and then we'd get to one, zero, 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 and this would be five factorial, which is 120, okay? So for clearness of notation, by the way, you know, they've put all of the, they've put all of these flexodecimals in, in these, uh, brackets, um, and that means we can distinguish them from the ordinary numbers, so I guess every time I write one of these I should put these brackets around it as well, but I won't fill the rest in there. Okay, um, so part one, all about playing around with that, and really important to spend a bit of time on part one in this sort of question, because it's really where you learn how the system works, and once you've got that clearly in your head, you can start thinking about it and start answering the next parts of the questions confidently. Okay, so it says now describe a workable procedure for converting flexidecimal numbers to decimal um, and explain why it works. Well, it might still be a little bit hard to write this down precisely, but we've basically got the idea now, right? We know that the columns are 
1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial, 5 factorial, etc. Okay, so if I'm if I get a number here like 3, 1, 2, 0, 1, I know what I've got to do is 3 times 5 factorial plus 1 times 4 factorial plus 2 times 3 factorial plus 0 times 2 factorial plus 1 times 1 factorial, right? So you just have to explain in a few words that this is what you're doing. But, you know, actually, I think in some ways, if you wrote, some, wrote, wrote it down as clearly as this, you know, maybe even um, good enough for the marks without... Uh, you know, without too many words, but I do advise putting a few words in here. I don't always write them down because I'm speaking them as I'm talking to you here. Um, right, so uh, which number do they want us to do as an example? One, two, two, one. Okay, so if I have one, two, two, one, um, uh, like that is one times four factorial plus two times three factorial plus two times two factorial plus one times one factorial. So that's 24 plus 12 plus 4 plus 1, so that gives us the number 41. Great. Okay, um, part 3 then. Okay, now describe a workable procedure for converting decimal numbers to flexidecimal and demonstrate it. Well, again, um, you know, I've got to just uh, think about my columns here. Let's write them down um, like this this time, the factorials. Okay, so what do we want to do here? We basically, just, just as with any number system, if we're doing it in binary or ternary or whatever else, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the largest uh, value that we can put in here, right? So I would write down here something like, okay, divide 255 by 120, see how many times you can fit it in and see what the remainder is, right? So 255 is 2 times 120, that gives us 240, plus 15. So I'm going to get 2 lots of 120. Um, and then 15, I don't get any 24s, but I can get two lots of six plus three. Um, so I'd have a two here and a zero here. And three, we already know, just is the flexidecimal one, one. So overall, we find here that 255 is two, zero, two, one, one. And again, I mean, if you get the answer there, um, you know, you're getting a, a lot of the, uh, you know, you, you've pretty much proved that you might know how this works, but a few words to the extent of how this algorithm works as well in actual words would be very useful to get all the marks there. Right, so part four, it says we could add flexidecimal numbers by converting them to decimal, adding them together and converting the result back again, but that would be a little bit inefficient perhaps. So it says, describe instead a process procedure for addition that works directly on the digits of two flexidecimal numbers, right? So Again, um, so I'm just writing the place values again here. And uh, so let's say I wanted to add 1, 2, 2, 1 uh, plus 2, 0, 1, right? So what's the problem? Well, this is a place value system. Okay, so I can just add the columns, right? There's no problem with that at all, right? So what would I get here? 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 0 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, and uh, 1 plus 0 is 1, right? So I've got this number that is in a sense a kind of crude flexidecimal number, but it's not a valid one because some of the entries here are too too large. Right? I'm not allowed a two in this final column and I'm not allowed a four in this second column. So I've just got to come up with a rule for carrying. Right? So, um, so let's think about it. Let's think about, so I want to carry this four over to the one here. And well, you know, four times three factorial is exactly four factorial. So I can carry this whole four over to the other column and get two, zero, two, two, right? Um, now again, two times uh, two times one factorial is two factorial. So I can carry this whole two over and get two, zero, three, zero. Ah, but now I've created a problem because in my two factorial column, I've got a three, but again, three times two factorial is three factorial, so this three lots of two factorial, I can instead write uh, three lots of two factorial, I can write as one lot of three factorial, and then I get this final answer to one zero zero. Okay, now, um, so what you see happens here is, you know, if I'm taking, let's say I had a slightly larger number, let's say it was one, let's say it was one, five, two, three or something. So the procedure we want to outline, I think we want to start on the right hand side here and uh you know if 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 this is the column number k 
we're going to take k plus 1 away from here, from this column, and add 1 to this column uh, as much as we need to to bring the numbers uh, below their maximum possible, right? And we'll just work from right to left here. So let's do that as another example here. So in the first column here, my 3, um, I'm going to take off 2 from that and be left with 1, and then I add 1 here to get 3. In this second column, um, I've now got a 3, so I can, um, uh, this time I'm going to take the whole of that 3 off and add 1 to this column. In this third column, I'm going to take 4 off uh, to get 2 and add 1 to this column, and now suddenly it's a it's a valid number right and you can you know you can check from the place value that you know if you you know what do these numbers actually represent right this three in this final column is just a three uh, in, in ordinary values right this is two times two factorial so that's worth four uh, this is five times six which is 30 and this is a 24 so this number that i've got here is 54 58 61 right and i've also written that here instead as two times 24 is 48 uh, 2 times 6 is 12, and 1 times 1, uh, and that's 61 as well, so we get a nice sense check that that works. Right, so again, you've got to write that in a lot more words than I have here, but we're going to say that, we're going to work from right to left, and subtract a k plus 1 from one column, add a 1 to the column next to it, and that's the equivalent of carrying in this system. Okay, um, right, part 5. Um, given a flex decimal number, how could you test whether it's a multiple of 3 without converting it to decimal? Well, um, think about this for a while. Uh, so 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6. That's a multiple of 3. And necessarily any higher factorial has a 3 in the product, right? So it's already a multiple of, of 3. Oh, sorry, not 24 factorial. <laughs> 4 factorial, right? Four, is, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, so it's got a factor of 3. So does 5 factorial. So like any number, any, whatever I put in here, like when I, you know, 3 lots of 5 factorial, 2 lots of 4 factorial, and 1 lot of 3 factorial, that's automatically a multiple of 3. So anything over here is fine. So all I've got to do is think about these last two digits. Right, and there's two ways I can end up with a multiple of 3. Either I have nothing here, or I have a 2 and a 1. Okay, so the test is uh, if it ends in 0, 0, or 1, 1, then it's a multiple of 3. Um, otherwise, it's not. Right. So if it ends in a, if it ends in one zero, it's a multiple of three plus two, and if it ends in zero one, it's a multiple of three plus one. Okay. So that's that. Um, and right now, part six. Um, I think this is really going to be the hardest one uh, to explain. I mean, your head is either in this or it's not. I think, but I'll give it a go. Um, so, okay. So. If the one zero 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 arrangements of the letters A B C D E F, let's pause for a second there. What does that mean? So this is uh, this number is just six factorial, right? It is one zero 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 zero. Um, so we know there are six factorial arrangements of the letters A B C D E F. Number of ways of arranging ob n objects in a line is n factorial. And it says if they're listed in alphabetical order and numbered in you know, order then uh, just numerically, right? One, zero, one, two, three, you know. Uh, what arrangement appears in position three, four, one, zero, one of the list? Okay, so um, the way we want to think about this is as follows, right? I've got these six letters and, uh, and I'm gonna place them in six, one of six positions. Okay, so, uh, so, it, this ordering, if you think about it carefully, corresponds to the following procedure. Okay, so I look at, I'm going to say, okay, so also the way of ways of ordering six uh, objects in a line is so, right, because there are six choices for the first, and then once I've got rid of uh, a choice for the first one, I've got five left for the next, and then four for the next, right, three for the next, right, so this is really how I'm thinking about this question, right, so in the first place, um, I've got these six choices, and the three says I'm going to take the third option, but third counting from zero, okay? Because the option because it only goes zero, one, two, three, four, five in this place, right? So this would be option zero, one, two, three, uh, four, five, okay? So um, 
So here I, I take these I take the three, which is D, right? And if you think about it, all the numbers that start with the three in this ordering are going to start with uh, D here. Um, and uh, there we go. So, um, and, and also if you think about it, uh, if we started, we, we uh, this is, um, okay, no, let me carry on. So, right, so now I've got rid of D. And now the next one, I'm going to take the fourth option, right? But uh, but the, but the, these are renumbered now. So zero, one, two, three, four. So out of what's left, I take the fourth option, which is F. Um, out of which is actually the fifth, obviously. Um, out of what's left from those, again, I renumber. Now I've got zero, one, two, and three. Uh, and uh, the one is B here. And I'm running out of space. Um, but the B is gone. And now I want to take the zeroth, which is just A, obviously. And then the first which is actually the second, because I'm starting at zero, so that's E. And then finally, I'm left with C. And, okay, I guess that's the hardest of these questions to, to really, uh, to, to explain super clearly. But if you think about the ordering, maybe it's helpful just to start actually, you know, writing down a few of these uh, and think about how the alphabetical ordering works. But I hope that's given you an idea of how to think about this question. So I hope that was useful. Pretty tough ending to that question, but remember, the uh, target for this paper isn't to get 100%. You're trying to get as much of it as you can. If you can get the whole question out, that's brilliant. But you know, if you get uh, you know three quarters of these questions out in the real thing, you're doing incredibly well. Uh, I think most successful candidates probably find they do you know maybe do one or two questions pretty completely, and then you know, partial uh, answers uh, to the others, the more you can do, the better, obviously. Anyway, I um, hope it was useful. I'll put the last question out very soon. Uh, so good luck if you're taking the exam this year in 2020, or if you're watching this in future years, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share it with your friends either this year or in future years, if you know anyone uh, applying for this test.